Okay, but we'll start the meeting and if anybody else turns up, they do. So, um, welcome to a later than normal Paris Council meeting. Um, thank you to Vivian for turning up tonight. I've got to leave at Sorry? I've got to leave at I'm sorry. Okay, thank you for attending. Oh, that's all right. Um, in case anything happens to me, we need to just uh, elect a temporary vice chair for the evening. Any offers? Not to, it's the painful work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Cruz. And Cruz now the um, acting vice chairman for the meeting. So we have to consider apologies for absence tonight. So we've had Colin Rose, Christine Aston, Rob Shaw, Chris Robinson, and Chris Dawson. Thank you. We anticipate Chris is busy for me this afternoon. Yeah. Jill often turns up late, so we shall see if Jill will turn Okay, anybody got any um, conflicts or community interests to declare that are on this month's agenda? No? Okay. So we'll go on to approve the minutes from the last meeting, which seems such a long time ago now, from late April. Um, anybody present got any um, items to, to bring up for an amendment or query or question? No, it's on us. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so we have a public forum, Vivian, any second? No? Uh, okay, so we have no members of the public here. So we'll go on to discuss and consider the action log from the previous meeting. So first on there is the village picture on the riverbank opposite the church. I think the only email I've seen regarding this is what type of surface do we want, either um, York stone paving or block paving. And I did, su did suggest printed concrete as an alternative because it's a lot more hard wear and you won't get weeds growing through it and it'll take less maintenance but I've never got a response to that. So can I make an observation? Have yes certainly we take it up a path or go and be be very, can we have a top surface that's sort of ridged a bit because if anybody goes on it and it's icy how quick you are to slip on it. Okay. Yeah if they could, because some of the landings <coughs> have got that green plastic on did you notice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just as an observation, but it is treacherous in the winter to yeah. get people on it. My fear with the York Stone is that um, when you get the brown rock salt spread from the uh, <coughs> lorries, if that lands on it, it will stain it, mm. and it soon goes green. York Stone soon goes green, and Rock Haven, similarly, that you've got to have the sand brushed in between it, and if it's not well maintained, you'll see rubbish growing in between, even in the, into the sand. So, um, what's the cost difference? I mean? I don't know, Graham said he needed to put something down on the planning applications to what the surface was going to be, but um, there's very little input from other councillors, if any at all, so I don't know what the outcome of it was. Some councillors seem very reluctant to engage in email correspondence during the month when there's a question that's been asked. So, um, so I believe Graham's put down both surfaces. Right. To get the plan rolling. Get the plan rolling, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that Even that's though a decision hasn't been made. That's something that obviously that can be decided at a later date. Okay, so we'll move on to that, the map board. Can I just ask my question? Who's paying for the work on this? Is it the council? So the last time we discussed it, they was discussing about getting grants, although at the moment we've paid £50 to middle level commissioners and I want to say 200, 250, I can't remember how much the cheque was for now, but it was for, rain, wasn't it? <clears throat> for the planning application. The only reason for asking is if you're really going to do a proper job, then you're going to have to dig out a bit of depth, you're going to have to put a good hardcore type one down, then you should put a concrete base, and then you should put whatever you want as a finished stone or block paving on top of that. 
Then, if the concrete does crack or anything, you won't see it because the top surface will cover it. Mm -hmm. And also, if there is any movement, it'll be simple enough just to rake the joints out and re cement the joints in. But I'm just thinking, if the council was going to pay for this, then it might be worthwhile paying out a bit extra to make sure it's a packer job. I think there was talk of approaching the um, Blunt Family Trust and also the um, Graham Tidmus Trust, which we don't know whether that's set up or running or not. So I think they were the two that was going to consider as well as other as well as other grants. So I'm just wondering, how are they going with this? Are they going to put railings on the ends or sides? Well, this or is all what the, this is. Going this will be a bit. I mean, it all adds to the cost. Well, this is all what's going to be in the planning application, Brian. So when the planning yeah. application comes out, we should see what has been planned. Yeah, exactly. There's no one speculating now what it's going to look yeah, like. Yeah, no, I was only asking if yeah. somebody had more you know, information about it. Yeah. Richard has been the chief councillor dealing with it, but... Um, yeah, um, it just, just before, that's all. Right. Ross, yes? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think they've applied to silver funding. Right. Yeah. Okay. But as Richard isn't here, we can't sort of go any further. But, you know, until, if Graham has um, submitted the planning application, then that's the next stage, and then if that gets approved, then we go from there. Okay, so the map board, some of us had a view of it at um, Monday's meeting when we discussed the low side field. Proof? Yeah, they've got the copies on the table outside, shall I go and get them up? Yes, if you like, yeah. Because I think the only person who wasn't here was... Oh, okay. That was a holiday, so. He was on holiday still. Unfortunately, I had to come back. Last week, so. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I think I might have been really good shit if I had. So, this is a copy of the, of the map board. I think there's still some fine tuning to be done because we realised that one footpath was on there that linked up to another one where it didn't or doesn't need to link up. So there I think there's some fine tuning to be done, so this is basically a sort of draft copy as to what's going to go up. Well. There is some fine tuning to be done, but essentially that is it and that will be the size. And the idea is just to get um, a paper copy laminated. Uh, and Rob has well, we'll devise the means of using the concrete posts by the village sign to push it up. Right, okay. Anybody got any comments on it? I haven't seen it. No, it's good. Okay, thank you. Okay, next one on the action log. It's been on here for ages. Taking over the cemetery. Don't know where we are with that other We've than. nothing at all from that. Colin was chasing. Um, Borough Council, but we've heard nothing since. Right. See, Colin's not here to ask. I know the cemetery working group is looking at extending the cemetery up to the end of the allotments and moving the fencing and everything along there. So that's just basically a work in progress at the moment. Um, I think quotes and everything are being sourced. For well, that. I have actually met four contractors there. And I was just a bit surprised, I asked Melanie before the meeting, and she said she hasn't received any quotes yet. But yes. I've met four different contractors, so... And they you surprised at that, Brian? That they haven't, haven't submitted quotes? Well, no, not, not, not probably, not completely, no. <laughs> OK, well, we'll wait until the next meeting, which is in two weeks' time, as to whether we've got any, any development on that. Perhaps we should have... <coughs> When Chris rang me earlier on, he did suggest putting a pipe in the drain um, on the right hand side, I think, he said. A pipe in the drain? A pipe in the drain, yes, when it's cleared out um, of rubbish. Um, and also talking of rubbish, I had a conversation with Steve Taylor of Community Service today. They are short of supervisors, if anybody would like to be a supervisor. Um, but they're hoping to be back in mid-October, so they'll then start working on there again. When you say a point in the drain, you mean a point in the actual drain yes. is there, so yes. that it could be overfilled? Or just yeah, well, yeah, but he did say also about the fencing going right up to the allotments, the first allotment plot. Yeah. So that will then hopefully 
discourage any allotment holders for putting anything in the dike. Yes, well, any allotment holders do put anything in the dike, they shall be hearing from me. Mm. The only thing that is, is because we agreed to go, because you've got the fences at two different um, angles, I've been telling the contractors, as it was agreed, that we go to the one nearest to the cemetery, so there will be a gap left. <coughs> I have I have emailed the tenant who's got the fence that sticks out a little bit further, as I was instructed to, um, and he said that he will look to see if he can move the fence, but the fence was there when he took over the plot, he didn't put it there. Yeah. Um, as I suggested the cemetery committee, if that chain link fence is going to be moved back, why can't that be the, fence, the dividing fence between the cemetery and the last allotment plots, rather than the allotment plots having their own fence butting right up next to a chain link fence. I think that makes more sense. Well, otherwise you've got a double fence. Or something. Yeah, and there'd be no, there's, there's no need to it. No, but I don't know whether maybe the allotment on the other side, because there's going to be that gap. I mean, you're talking about rubbish being dumped, whether they could just or maybe the gas or you know from the allotment so I did fill in that little bit to stop anybody walking between the new fence and the original well, if, fence. If, if the allotment holder on the left hand side can't for whatever, moon, whatever reason move the fence back fur enough to make it a straight line and I suggest that we, you know you put the chain link fence as his fence then if there is a gap on the other allotment side They'll probably just take their fence down and take a couple of a couple of foot of extra bit of land to yeah to, make it up to that allotment yeah. yeah yeah be probably the better way again when you know I'll have a word with the allotment tenants yeah. in due course those those two on the end there and see what they think once we know what's happening with that fence yeah I might think of what you're saying like you know, yeah. the rubby side to dump or you leave the gap and somebody wants to dump something uh, and just come down again really and then just walk yeah through that gap yeah. Other than that, there seems to be no other movement from the Borough Council on the um, actual takeover of the cemetery, so we'll all leave that. Anybody else, anything on that? No? I was just oh. going to say about your comment about the um, people who live in, I can't even name the house, which I'm Morby House. Yeah, Morby House. Um, have they been written to at all about the rubbish that has been put in there? Not to my knowledge. Because it was unbelievable what was in there. Do we write to them or do we not? Well, I don't think we that... We don't know it's them, do we? Not the necessarily, thing. no. That, that, their garden only go. The people who live in Mulberry House, their garden only goes up to the end of the cemetery fence. Mm -hmm. From the cemetery fence onwards belongs to the... Other side, yeah. The other well, side. I have the already door. spoken to Scott Racy quite some time ago and I said their community service would be in there clearing that out. I said, and then it's up to you to keep your side clear. It doesn't look as if you've done anything. No, we can't, because he set trees along the top yeah. edge, didn't he? Well, we have to go and pop the dope, they can really serve us, won't you? Yeah. yeah. I think. I think a lot of look at that was when they, Charles packed it up and they went in there and they just dumped the stuff what he, yeah. you know, little blocks and that from the, what, green hairs. From the green hairs, all big blocks of concrete. That's where the concrete was. The dope would have gone further along the cemetery behind that fence, but as I said in my email to the cemetery group, because that fence blocks off the mm. seeing the dike, the chap who does live in the Mulberry House just, just filled it in with garden rubbish mm. up to the end of the up to the end of the fence. Mm. That's my fear that if the cemetery fence gets extended, he's got you no know, he'll probably do the same again. Just keep filling it in. Does that bit of land this side of the Mulberry House? Plant there because that didn't, did it? There's a bit in there that now belongs to the borough. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that. Because they applied for a house on there, didn't they? Very narrow. Yes, borough council did, yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next one. So lights in three holes and next end. Um, there was an email from the people clear viewers in the the um, LED yeah. lighting saying they're concerned about having white lights in the path alongside the, the road because of um, the highway stipulation that white lights would denote the edge of the road and people might think it's the edge of the road. Um, I think if they were in three holes, knowing there's a very wide grass bird between the edge of the road and the footpath, they'd have to be fairly stupid to try and drive over the verge. But um, anyway, the solution is, is potentially to have either blue lights or alternate blue and white lights. 
um, along there. Have we heard anything back regarding the quote yet? No, I, no. I, changed, I chased her again last week and she said she was still going back to their planners to see if either was yeah. a feasible option on them for the lights. Yeah. So if we get if we get a feasible option and they come back with a quote, we shall see what it's going to cost to do the footpath along Main Road, three holes, and also Lakes End um, between Cockpen Road and Lake Avenue. Um, and if the, if the parish council thinks it's acceptable, we'll submit it to the um, parish partnership scheme. To see if we can get half funding or half funding for it. Okay. And last one is. 185, 87 and 89 Croft Road Hedging. Um, we're aware from Melanie's email that she got very nasty emails, texts, phone calls and communication from a resident who lives in Croft Road. But since then, the hedge appears to have been cut back. And whether this was highways or somebody else... I reported I it to highways yeah. after I had the... Okay. So hopefully it's yeah. highways that have done it. Yeah, that appears to have been appears to have been cut back. It has made a difference though, hasn't it, as you come down Croft Road approaching the 16 foot junction. You don't feel as if you've got to keep it clear of the road anyway to, to get past it now, do you? Yeah, but you, you can see a little bit more, can't you now, than what you used to, so it's helpful. Yeah. That's the other side of what's problem as well, because when you come out one turn left, one of the trees hang over them. Yeah, that's on that corner. I mean, it looks like somebody may have cut down a little bit, though, but it could do with being cut a little bit higher, a little bit more on the other corner, really. I mean, it looks like there's a, a half hearted attempt to clear it a bit, but I wouldn't say it's a very good job what they've done. So, as you go down the. Is it 16 foot? From Croft Road, is it this side or that side? If you you you're coming more. from Croft Road and you turn into the sixty, yeah. or it'll be on your right hand side, right yeah, side. on that corner. I can report it, and it's trees on there, yeah. Tree bushes, it, it's pretty <laughs> obvious to be honest. Well, it's the fence, but the tree the fence fence over, over it, yeah. yeah, so. yeah that's um, Wyndham Lodge. Mm. Yeah, Wyndham Lodge is the one that's on the opposite corner to where. Yeah, on the other side, yeah. On the other side, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's all on the on the actual log. Thank you very much. Um, reports from individual councillors, council groups and clerk. So and Prue and I here who are on the planning committee. So there's the planning applications that we've had most recently and parish council or the planning group's responses on behalf of the parish council anybody got any questions about those no okay um to discuss and review the neighborhood plan true right i contacted the borough and um the person i spoke to whose name has escaped me said wait for the borough to complete their review of their local plan and see if that will affect our local plan and review it then. Okay, right. Simple then. To discuss turning off street lights to save electricity and cost implications. True. Um, I don't think we can go anywhere with this at the moment because we've just signed a new contract with Swaylek, have we not, Melanie? We have, yes. For a year? Yes. Yes. So we just have to wait and see what the new electricity cost is going to be, which is going up from the 1st of October, and how much support we're going to get um, before we can put together any facts and figures for a community consultation. Right. So I went to a seminar on Thursday, which was Norfolk Parish Training and Support, and we brought up regarding what we were going to do for this year's budget. And they were basically saying for me to put in the budget 50% more of the street lighting costs than what we pay now. Because that's what they consider is going to happen. Just to make you aware of that. Off, off hand, Any any idea what that would amount to, on from what we pay now to what it would go? We pay up? roughly for street lighting energy. We pay roughly about two hundred pounds a month. 
Yeah. Uh, you're saying it's probably going to go up two or three hundred. Yeah. Yes, for, um, for, for July it was um, £207.90. But we have, that is discounted because we had all LED loads put on, so that is, if we, yeah. we had got LED, if we'd got the old sodium loads still, I think that would be a lot higher. So we, are, we have gained since we've had all LED loads put in, so that's, um, that's one thing. So try and make a note to sort of visit that um, for the contractors up for renewal again. What have we just done? We've just done it in September, so if we start looking at it probably July. Yeah, next July. It'll give us time, won't it? Yeah. But at the moment, you, I couldn't even move from one con, uh, one supply to another. They just won't have it at all. Nobody will quote. No. Nobody wants you to move. I think the problem is that, I don't know how other parish, parish councils get on, but it's an, it's an unmetered supply. Yeah. Other electricity companies won't touch it unless you've got a meter actually showing how much electricity you're using. So all they've got from us is how many street loads we've got, and then they work out the energy consumption and no doubt the, um, the cost of the electric um, cost of the electricity from there. And I just imagine other parish councils that own their own street loads are in a similar position. So um, we are probably st st stuck when it comes to looking for other contractors. Because the first thing we'll say, you know, they probably don't don't allow for unmetered supplies. I think we have had this in the past when we looked for them. That's why we see why we've been this way there for quite some time. Um, simply because of metered, but um, okay, we'll note that for discussion next year and see if we can bring that through. Okay, update on benches for the cemetery and memorial plaques. True. I seem to draw the short straw right? <laughs> Um, we've ordered two benches for the cemetery, one of which will go into the building facing the road, and one will go down um, by the uh, cremation lots. Plax, um, I think, Ros, you were going to see... Yeah, them. I spoke to Fen Regis. Yes. Um, they were £40, pound, um, six, in six inches long, two inches deep. Um, but there is a company, did I send that to you mainly? Mm. Um, they did one, the plaque that's on the bench in the uh, orchards for Nigel and Charles and that was £30. Well, I think we have to agree a supplier and if people want plaques, <coughs> they've got to order them through us mm. so that all the plaques... We have match. also got those, um, like, I'm going to say concrete, stone I don't know what they, the stone ones are, they, that are in there. I don't know whether you want a different sort again, or you, you want to keep with the stone ones, or you can uh, do this wood idea where we put plaques on. I think if people want a plaque, the first option will be for them to have a stone plaque in the building. If they really want a plaque on a bench, and the only way to go will be to for us to decide on the supplier mm -hmm. and for so that they are all uniform otherwise we're going to have hot options of different plaques and materials. Both the suppliers, Fen Regis and this, I can't even think of this other company's name, they are um, brass, drilled, pre-drilled, lacquered and they supply the screws as well. So it's easier really to use the online supplier. Mm -hmm. Which they're both, they're both, well, Fenway just can do the same, but they're £40. And the other ones are 30, 30 yeah. So it would make sense from the point of view of. Well, it isn't in a matter to us, is it? Because no. people who no. are. Um, yeah. I think perhaps we just have to specify um, the down boundary of Fenway Mission. Mm. Well, at least they just give the words. To know and email, you could order two or three at a time if necessary. Yes. Yeah, so it's required. Yeah. Realistically, I'll push the stone ones first. Yes, I agree. If it came to ordering them and they were from an online supplier, it would make sense that you know we place an order every six months or every every quarter or every six months. Obviously, depending on whether people want want a plan. It's no good ordering one this week because by the time Melanie's ordered it. Somebody else would want one, so I think when people sort of say they want a plaque, say that you know we'd be ordering them every quarter or every six months um, to save on postage and mm -hmm. 
just regarding the stone ones, as we saw um, Wednesday evening, they're not always true to size because a lady came and spoke to me when I was there, Mrs. Turco, and uh, she was <coughs> She had hers set back, I think, twice because it was wrong. It wasn't square and it was all rough edges as well. So, where she got hers from, I don't know. I always tell him to go to Richard King. King, yeah. yeah. So, he knows what size it is mm. and they're never all uniform, aren't they? Yeah. But I don't know, she didn't say where she cut it from, but you could definitely see it wasn't square and it was all rough. Some of the corners, two of the corners were square, two of the corners were round. I was just going to say it might be an idea for the parish council to find out who the people were that done it, mm. so that we don't use them if they're that bad at what they do. Yeah. I just tell them to go to Richard King, as I say. Mm. I think they're roughly about 50 or 60 pounds from there. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think so. Okay. Anything else on that talk? Well, apart from, do we have any progress with um, Mrs. Turco's bench, which is sitting in my yard? Well, Richard, well, that's why I thought he said he was going to provide some slabs. Richard said he would supply, supply yeah. some slabs and maybe um, Kelvin could yeah. could lay them. Yeah, but have the slabs turned up? No, I haven't heard any more about Would slabs. it be quicker if Kelvin got the slabs from it or timber? Could do. But we need to check that you know, is, Mrs. is Mrs. Turco paying for the installation or and the slabs and any materials or is the parish council? Is after her after all her bench? Uh, yeah, it's her bench and she should yeah. be responsible for I just asked her where she wanted the soaps and she mm. just said I never I, I never mentioned anything about slabs, that was Richard's yeah. idea. I mean, I, I collected the bench and assembled it, but I'm not, not prepared to charge for that because it didn't take that long to do because it's basically a flat pack bench. Mm. Um, but if there's any cost incurred, then Mrs. Turco's got to be aware that she's got to pay for the pay for the installation of it. I'll take some numbers. Okay. So you won't be talking many slabs, would you? What about eight? Probably about eight. Yeah. Yeah. To uh, yeah, to, uh, to form them. Right now. Yeah. It's just how you put, how how to secure the bench to the slabs. That's all. <sighs> well. We touched on the subject briefly, and I said, really, what you should do is, is dig out two areas, put some rods or something, where you drill holes in the bottom of the bench feet for rods to go into and resin bond them into that, and concrete the slabs. Then, you know, try and do it so you've got some real good anchors there. I mean, have we had things nicked from the cemetery? No. In the past, I mean, but I know Calvin, problem or has, um, oh, what do you call it, put some angle on or something, he's put something on the benches that he did in the cemetery for Charles and on the picnic benches he put pieces of metal work in there and concrete in there. Yes, yeah, see, I'm just going by with the experience, yeah. experience I've had with cemetery where relatives I've got but it's nowhere near here so but if you haven't had problems here, then they'll come to you with so. more you should have, you know. Another thing I remember one day, the bench was the one what Mr. Mulker had then. About to come in the house, sent him small over. Well, she, she had a bench put laying there. Didn't Tony Robinson's going missing? Yes, she had a bench. That went missing. That's ages ago. Yeah, that was well, years ago. That was years ago. Yeah. The answer is there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they will go missing if they are not securely. Yeah. Um, if, you put some if, they, if they look a nice bench, yeah. they will go missing. They will go, exactly. So, yeah. um, and that one's going to be going to be a bit more exposed. The wind might even catch it, yeah. I guess, mm. if we have really bad But, but uh, yeah, as I say, I think he's put some angle on one over it, sort of over the spell, over the leg or something, mm. so it's concrete. Mm. Mm. Okay, but well, we'll leave that and see yeah. if there's any progress with that um, going forwards. Okay, to um, discuss the outcome of the communications meeting. Um, Bob isn't here, but we all had his report that he sent through, so those that, you're, those that are here tonight and those that are not here have had a copy of that to be able to read. Um, pretty straightforward, it's all about the new um, Parish Hub website. So um, we, can, we can read that, just note that we can have that through. To note the copy date of the Parish Magazine, which I believe has been extended to today, or has it been 
extended any further through? Well, it's been extended to today because uh, by the end of last week we had practically nothing in. Presumably because of the, the Queen's funeral, just everything mm -hmm. just stopped. Um, we now have, um, well, Steve's working on the magazine, and hopefully it will go to the printers at the end of the week. Um, printing costs have gone up to £955. We discussed this, and the printer did give us various options, including um, <coughs> just using black and white inside, or just for now, or having a full gloss cover and a copy inside. And we decided that um, while there will be a saving action, the magazine will be ruined. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't resemble mm -hmm. itself at all. So we decided to take the hit and pay the increased cost and I hope that additional advertising will come our way, which we Okay. Thank you very much for that, to note the outcome of the cemetery meeting. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Again, I sent round, well, I think I did. Did I send it to everybody or did I just send it to the cemetery committee? Well, I just sent it to them. So, the meeting was Wednesday, the 14th of September. There was Chris, Chris, Ross, Prue, Kelvin, me, Richard, and Brian. Um, Chris and Kelvin are going to cut the Brambles back on Jamie's side of the fence because they've got quite overgrown. Um, I need, to, I still haven't done it yet. I need to check when the last tree site survey was completed to see if we need to do that again. Uh, the new cremation area plots that have been, um, that Kelvin's done on the left hand side, we're going to get Kelvin to lay some slabs on there so that they're equally spaced and also that when we get new um, gravestones on there they don't sink like they have done in the main part of the cremation plot. Like Prue already said there's going to be a bench located on the left hand side down near the cremation plots. Um, again we've already discussed about the fence moving from the, um, the dividing um, between the cemetery and the allotments, we're going to move it further down. Andrew's kindly asked Daniel, who I, and I can never say his surname. Daniel Zabanski. Yeah, to move his uh, fence in line with the other Daniels, which is the other side. Um, the hedging that's on the left hand side, where the spoil heap is, going to be moved down um, with the new part of the fencing. Some of it's still alive, some of it isn't. Kelvin's going to remove the trees and bushes that are on the left hand side in the allotments. The spoil heap is going to be spread to remove the dips in that part of the allotment. Um, new fencing either side, Brian's trying to get us quotes for those. I'm going to write in the main cremation plot where these, where these headstones are all dipped um, I'm going to write to everybody that's got a plot in there to ask if we can actually lift it up and then gravel that area. Um, and then in the very first part of the cremation plots, on the left hand side, some of the headstones are rounded the other way. So I'm going to write to those guys as well to see if we can turn them so they all face the same way. There's a low branch um, sort of on the turnaround that probably needs removing. We need to get somebody in to look at that and take that off. Again, like Ross said, a bench is going to be located in the Brick Memorial. Um, Chris has kindly said he'll clean the memorial area. I've put a notice up in that memorial area to say that all the dead plants, um, there's quite a lot of very faded artificial flowers and stuff in there. It seems to have been in there for a long time. I've put a notice up to say that in a couple of weeks, if it hasn't got a name on it, because some have got specific names on, then it's going to be removed and chucked. And that's it. Okay, thank you. So we'll discuss the low side land meeting. Um, those councillors what were there and had the presentation. This is um, like the hard copy of the presentation that um, Louise gave me. We did have 
the attachment, which Louise said, which, was exa which is exactly the same, so all councillors should have a copy of this now to read through, and that's basically what the meeting was about. And um, we have now preliminary books, the first date for the first consultation, which is to start getting the, you know, the residents, and I should imagine the immediate residents to the site on board. I think that's been advertised in the newsletter, is it? No, it is, yes, and I asked Melanie if she could circulate it to get on the notice boards. And if anybody wants a copy of it, one here. So, so we had Mark and Louise come and give us a consultation on the new television, which was very effective. I thought that was really, really good, rather than having to look through this every time. Everybody would have to look at the screen and see what was there. So basically it was discussed, you know, the next stages forward, which is a public consultation, and then sort of the feasibility and everything like that, but um, before we start going into the, the planning side of things. Anybody else that was there got anything to add? No. No? Okay. Um, whilst we're on about reports, um, I will add, add this one, which is the electrical installation update for Upwell Beach Hall that um, Rob sent around. I think that's the most appropriate part to time to bring that into. Um, Keith and I did hang back at the, after the low side land meeting and um, spoke to Rob and he showed us the electric cupboard. And I think we should minute thanks to the Upper Village Hall. Is it still a committee or group? Yeah, committee. The Upper Village Hall committee um, for the work they've done so far to look so much better the electrics look in there. It's obviously that they're more safe and up to date in there now, so it looks you know, really good. So I think we should um, thank them for the work there. Um, <coughs> going on to um, Rob's um, report, the I think the last part about having the um, electric charging things should be supported because if it is, it will be the only public charging points in the village. Um, Upwell hasn't got any. I don't know if Outwell has, but Upwell hasn't got any. Um, and I think it would be good if we got to out of village hall, which could be used as Rob's outline, people could su subscribe to them. If they had dedicated parking bays, which were people for only people with electric vehicles, so they may park there if they're attending a village hall event to charge their vehicle up if they want to. Um, I think it should be. I think it should be supported. What does those councillors present think? Any um, thoughts? Well, what are the cost implications? I am trying to find the is um, oh, so to su supply and fit it would be one thousand and fifty plus that. I don't think we know how much it would actually uh, electricity uh, wise. Who's the supplier? I don't know. Is that each or yeah, that's each. Yeah. yeah. You could apply for sell for that. I can just stop you. No, I was thinking that the. Uh, Basically, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to the cash board. The council is not in a position to spend any money at the moment until we can um, finish sufficient work on the village hall to be able to get the fifty thousand pound silver out. That we have. Been but we've yeah, we've got fifteen thousand pound that's been promised, but at the moment we've only currently spent twenty eight. We need so we've got to spend another twenty two to be able to get the fifty thousand pound back. But Prue is correct, our bank balance. Is not looking very good at the moment. No, so I think any non essential expenditure at the moment just has to go on hold until we can get that. Um, um, that that grant money out. That that also notes that um, you will find the energy companies, particularly BP and Shell, will contribute towards those types of units, providing they can have some branding on them. Uh, BP in particular are looking to expand their network of charging devices. The way it works with BP is they will install the device, they are responsible for the maintenance of the devices. Uh, you have to subscribe to the BP Pulse app, which is free, and you pay them per unit for the electricity you use and take from that unit. So it may be worth reaching out to either BP or to Shell or both and see what can happen. Do you have any to Rob? Is it Rob that's... Yeah. Yeah. Rob does say that he would like to propose that if the parish council can fund one of the EV charging points from the remainder of the 50,000 um, K Green Hall project, Silbran, then the hall will fund the second. 
So if we've only spent 28,000 of the current silver on, 1,050 pounds plus the VAT, it's going to be a small, just a small portion that can be taken out of that and still leave plenty for other projects, I would have thought. Yes, we need, but if by the same time can be your shelter installed on their own, and be responsible for them, which is perhaps equally, if not more important, um, then I think they should try that avenue. Well, if Mike can email Rob for details, Rob can then have a look, then Rob can probably replay, come back with another report. But I think it would be a good idea, you know, was it, you know to have two, two charging points at the village hall. We have suggested in the past maybe the health centre or something like that, but. Um, I know there is the issue of the closing of the, of the gate, but if people know that if people who are going to charge them, whether it be people that attend events or people <coughs> that come in, you know, the daytime when the gates open, and we could impress on the hall manager to make sure that the gates are open at specific times, so early in the morning to late in the evening or something like that. You can. I think what the reason I recommend someone like VP is because their their app uh, manages what they call dwell time. Because otherwise you'll get some individual part there at 9 o'clock in the morning, leave their car plugged in all day, nobody else gets to use it. BP have a very clever technique for managing that amount of time. They know when the vehicle is fully charged, and they'll send out reminders automatically to say, you can leave your car there. Thank you. Yeah. It sounds like they've got it down to a fine art, so it sounds like a good idea to inquire, but then we go and we do. Oh, yes, yeah. Talk to them, also talk to the energy providers as well. All of the big energy providers are now on the same bandwagon of trying to get installations, and there are plenty of opportunities out there for them to pay to have it on the site. This is something we've got in the action block, we'll just leave to the village hall committee. Leave it to the committee on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, thank you very much for that, Mike, for that update. So we'll pass it on to Rob, and then I don't know if he was updated to. to um, what happen? Okay, so we'll move on to discuss new fibrillator, defibrillators around the villages. I don't know who, I think Ros was in use. I initiated it because I saw an advert on Facebook saying that Wisby St Mary had provided four parish council that was, and I asked why well, hasn't that four parish council provided any? Well, right now that will come down to not a book to provide any. Um, but some of the town funding groups offered some kind of sponsorship or grant? They did. Mm -hmm. They said they could have one sited on their building or land, whatever. Yeah. Russell's will have one on their front shop. But um, and I think Chris also said he had got access to some funding. He said he would try and help. He didn't say definitely, but he said he would try and help. Mm -hmm. Well, I think until we've got the costing and the funding in place, we can't take this any further. I think we, I think we need to definitely confirm locations, mm -hmm. those at Brown Foods which are prepared to have one and provide it, or those which are provide, you know, willing to provide the location, but... Rob has been into the co-op as well, I think. Right. And we talked about the extent of Lakes End Individual, mm -hmm. but... Um, Lakes Individual, how much are they? Because I could do my £250 towards Lake Sense defibrillator. I did for the prices last time, but I can't remember exactly how much they were. It depends on the model, about £13, £15. I was going to say £1,500. I was going to say £1,500. Wasn't there some discussion about refurbished ones? Yeah, yeah Rob's found. Is it Rob that's found the site where the Rob's Rob found the site where 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 the I think I said Lakes End and Freehold. Well, I could, no, I'm doing insurance for Freehold, but the Lakes End I could do the 250. Okay. Yeah. So then I think you could also get the British Heart um, Foundation to mm -hmm. contribute a bit as well. Yeah. So as many people, I mean, as many people we can get on board to do it. Yes, the, the better. But I need to get it soon because I'm, you know, my time's going. All right. And I need to have that sorted just before Christmas. Okay. We have also got considered they've got ongoing costs, you've got to buy the pads and secret pads every so often and you know. And you can't always get them at the moment. When when we said about it before, because there's all different prices where the vendors, mm -hmm. different models and sort of smart and all sorts of thing get up to here sort of I think grand, that. that one that Richard got, wasn't it? 
1,300. So there is, there is the cabinets as well. Yeah. There's okay. nobody really have a secure cabinet type thing like mm -hmm. um, three holes has got, or the um, perspex thing. Which are, they're still secure, but it just depends on how secure you want yeah. to make them. Mm -hmm. What did Matt Wellney have? So we've got Community Heartbeat. Yeah, that's the one we've got there with it. I don't know how much it was, that was before my time, yeah. but I know it costs them probably about 250 to £300 a year to so yeah. keep it updated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have four, well, that's another mm -hmm. pounds a year, exactly, yeah. or 1200 So I think this needs to be, <coughs> <coughs> it needs a bit more work. If, if Lake Zen can get one and get it funded and maintain it, you're the most out on the limb. Three holes have got one. Yeah. Um, we have got one here once it's finished. There's another one at the school as well, on the outside of the building, but not everybody knows you have to access that through the car park. You can't access it through the main gates because they're locked. Mm -hmm. But you go through the car park and then through the steps in the brick wall. Yeah. So there is one there. There is one there, yeah, but I don't know how many people know that's widely in place. Well, I the school, I suppose when you ring 999, no, they tell you, don't they? They should do. They should do. But if you say, where, they say, where are you? Are you there, PE 14, or maybe? They say they must want to do it at all. Yeah. They uh, said that there's one at the Apple Academy, but you say you, they would turn up at Apple Academy and gates are locked, they wouldn't know to go through the dark mark. No, because the gates are in the Dennis, they explain it. I don't know how no. good no. it is. No. I know when I filled in the forms here, I had to say where it was, near the main front door, through the gate off the A1101, mm -hmm. or drive into the car park if the car park gates are open. But it's not you just pull up out the front, like I saw somebody two or three months back, and just come through the gate. The, the ideal locator would be what three words. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that was if that was used, I've found um, a lot more things now which say which gives you an address and it says or what three words and you type that in and that's as good as anywhere to. Mm -hmm. To that before what through yeah. <laughs> yeah. but we could take family and up on there they offer to have one um, and make it available to <coughs> I think family foods operate 24 7 anyway yeah. don't they so yes. it would more than likely be you know on their office which is just inside their entrance so that shouldn't be a problem I think we've got we've got time. This is not something that's urgent or time restricted. I think we've got time to investigate it further, investigate further funding, locations, sponsorship, and things like that. So, although the parish council may not be directly funding them, I think we can actually do more work to see if we can get some more around the village. Yes. I mean, we've, we've we've funded plenty of dog waste bins in our time. I would have thought. So, yeah, seriously, it's great. You thought health had one in. Just a quick question, would it not be wise to put the location of the existing ones on that map? That is a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I, th I think this, this map is just not going to happen if we mess it up at the end of all. Okay. The is, um, but sure, if, and if you dial 999, they will tell you when the defibrillators are. Okay. Mm. Thing is, we've already paid for the map, so to then go back to the guy and ask him to change it again. Okay. It wouldn't take much to get a little coloured sticker though and, and put, on, put on there defibrillator. Oh, I was going to say, or put a mark or a initials, you could do that. Because you ain't got that many maps that get to do. It wouldn't, I don't think it would take much just to add something neat and tidy <coughs> to it of a way of a. <coughs> Cone self adhesive dot. Or half, a little tiny half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. 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 And then just put the, yeah. have the little heart and have with a, just a little stick which says defibrillator and put under the um, the key of mm. where everything's at. Yeah. yeah. That would be easy to do. And then if as defibrillators <laughs> are added, we can put them on there. Yeah. It's like a backup if you do that. I mean, you'll find 999 and you presume they will tell you, but if it's on the map as well, then yeah. it's, you know, it's a backup system as well. And it, it could help. also be, once we know we've got more, you know, if we've got any more in the village, then there could obviously be um, a newsletter article. 
different locations, what three word locations, yeah. things like that to make a feature of it. Okay, anybody anything else to say about defibrillators? No? Okay, so we'll go on to discuss the SIL grants awarded to the village hall. So, is that what you Yeah, so like Pro and I already said, um, village hall committee need to spend this other 22,000 so we can gain this uh, 50,000 pound back. Um, they've spent £9,000 on a burglar alarm and smoke detectors and I've applied to get, we was given a £5,000 grant towards that, I've applied for that. That's actually gone into the Village Hall Committee bank account, I've got to move that over so it comes back into our bank account on the Parish Council. And the other one that they're now working on is refurbishing the bar and we've had a seal grant for £3,500 for, for that. Um, but the money to actually pay for that will come out of the village hall committee and then that money will go back into there. And that's it, really on the silk grants. Okay, thank you. Um, so there any health and safety issues? Any councillors in the present got anything to note of anything for health and safety wise? Oh, I it's not health and safety as such. Sorry. Maybe, 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 okay, okay, um, hopefully, hopefully it will come to me. Right. Um, oh, I, mean, yes, I know. Um, sorry, Ross, you, you go and I'll follow you. Um, the footbridge, I'm near what was Moss's garage, um, from walking up there from March River side. There's briars hanging over onto the actual ramp of the, as you walk down on going towards Thurns. And there's an elder bush sticking out. And I'll ask Tim if it's safe to do so. Yeah, I'll ask Tim if it's safe to do so. To they're, on the, they're on actually on the actual concrete ramp as you go down. If somebody could trip on them, yeah. I'll ask Tim if he can um, when he's got the got the time to pop and have a look and do a general clear up of any vegetation mm -hmm. and stuff that's interfering with the passage down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I know what the other one. Oh, yeah. 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 So I've, I've reported it. I went down there because I thought it was derelict. <laughs> I was going to put a, send them a letter and I have, haven't redone the letter. So I need to do the, read in the letter, but I have reported the roof to CNC. Right. Did you contact David Masters? No, I haven't done that yet. AD um, Hurst is usually in contact with him. I've got a telephone number from Chris. Yeah. But he's not what? here, he doesn't live here, he won't know anything. No. You, need, you need the office, you know. Yeah, Sue Catherine. Sue Catherine. Okay. Yeah. Catherine. Catherine. Um, Metcalf to me. Well. <laughs> yeah. I'll add that to the action log as well. Melody's yes. got something. Um, um, you can do them if you write a letter, and I can, I can drop it in. Mm. Um, but it needs, there's no point, it is dealing with Pronto, so if you do that. Yeah, I've got a letter on here already done. Okay, so we'll I'll do that. I'll send it over to you. Send it over to me and I'll put it off and um, take it in there. Thank you, Craig. Could I just ask who would you actually hand it to? For, huh? Who would you hand it to? Sue in the office. You know, I mean, who's in the office though to accept it? Sue. I mean, because otherwise they might just, you know, put it to one side. Well, I will try and make sure I. Um, I actually catch her. Sometimes she's there. She works. Um, a lot of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go around the go through the yard and straight. Well, I did last time. Went through the yard yeah. and then it's in the actual. The, yeah, the office is in the yard. Yes. Yeah. Which yard? The one where the houses are up near Diamond House. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was going to say because I just got that end once. Mm. Yes. Yeah, any other? If you let me have another. Right. Really. Yeah. Leave that um, for Melody to action from Parish Council and crew to, um, to, to deliver a letter. Okay, so if there's nothing else on health and safety, um, finance to note payments made <coughs> since the last meeting. This goes back to obviously the beginning of September. So, all been paid. Yep. Anybody have any queries about them that are not on the finance committee? I don't think there's no. anything very exciting on there, to be fair. No. Okay then, so we'll 
put them down as okay. Um, income, no income and expenditure balance reconciled in the previous month, which usually tallies up with yeah, all nothing. the expenditure. Yeah, nothing exciting to report on that. Okay, thank you. And uh, note the income and expenditure balances as reconciled for the village hall account. This is all sent as an attachment. Yeah. So currently, or at the end of August, um, the village hall had £43,782.07 in their account. Right, thank you very much. To discuss any concerns from councillors and general correspondence, up on matters. Um, I spoke to Bill uh, recently, just to know something that he was able to continue to have. But he pointed out that the portable buildings uh, at the end of small load um, are still there and they should have been removed 1st of September. Vivian right. has kindly yeah. reported that for us. So so it, I've reported it again. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, okay thank you. Um, Within an hour of you, tell me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, there's one other thing that I'm asking. No, no, it doesn't need to come up now, right? That's the other thing I needed to bring up. Awesome. Um, Vivian very kindly reported the lady that arrived on Nightwish Land, but she has since disappeared. I saw her walking, going into town with bare feet. I couldn't believe it. I haven't seen a lady like that before in the whole world. Bare feet? Bare feet. She arrived. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah, so beginning of the week, on. by taxi, I had the gentleman who lived in the bungalow next door on my doorstep, wasn't happy bunny, and uh, I goes up there and she was still at the end of the land with all her belongings round her, and I said, oh, I said, are you camping? She said, I bought, bought it. I said, the field? No, a plot. I'm going to have some chickens. And I thought, really? There's no water, there's no sanitation, nothing. That evening she'd got, and it's still there, the green tarp wall and the sticks to shears as fence. Oh, it's like that. Right. And she was camping underneath. But the next day she disappeared. I had seen Tim Carter actually yesterday morning. Right. Okay. So, but uh, we had this several years ago, didn't we? That did come several yeah. years ago, that yeah. website. But if we check out Gladwish land sales and put in up well, it still shows still shows a plan with all the plots that are there, and it tells you how much that they're asking for them. But um, I can't remember last time I looked. I think I only said like two or three had been reserved, and I thought, what idiots have bought them because they can't do anything with them. But um, that was a trend which you know, thankfully seems to. Have died away now because it wasn't just this parish it was all you know a lot over East Anglia that I remember it being on the national news that uh, planning applications were being made on land that nobody or the people didn't own. Yeah but the morning after um, she arrived I come up from mine to the field stone house and there's a person, a man, going through underneath Joby's fence on his bike. Who he was, I do not know. Uh, well, that's not our concern. <laughs> okay. Whilst we're on upward matters, um, I'd just like to minute thanks to Councillor Chris Robinson and Calvin Judd for their work that they've done on the Stonehouse allotment site. It was getting a, quite a lot of rubbish at the, at the top end of the site in one corner, um, either from what the community services have managed to pull out of the dike. They've been think, suspecting a little bit of fly tipping and also from past ten um, allotment tenants that had um, cleared the sites and dumped the rubbish there. So Chris and Kelvin have very kindly cleared the whole site. It now looks a lot tidier, obviously no rubbish there. Um, I've, emailed, I've been in contact via email with all the allotment tenants and have suggested that maybe we have a, three strips around the outside which could be um, just sown down with wildflower seeds and then have a grass car parking area in the middle. The shed was being removed when I came by today. Just, no, it went yesterday. Oh, yesterday, was it? I see it sometimes, but like, there's a lady there and somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
because many people were going to collect it. That would have been gone anyway. It would have been gone, yes. We were going to collect it, and I went down, went down in my van and <coughs> it was gone. So come back and we left it. So hopefully I've emphasised to all the allotment tenants now that um, any rubbish they wish to dispose of, they have to do so responsibly themselves. And if they struggle, then get in contact with myself or Melanie, as we don't want any more rubbish um, leaving there, either from existing tenants or new tenants. So hopefully we can keep that clear now and say do something with it. Um, I'm going to see if I can get the allotment tenants on board with doing some wildflowers. One gentleman said if it goes down to grass, he will keep it trimmed and kept tidy. He didn't, he thought that wildflowers would be a good idea because he said with the allotments and surrounding areas, he said you know if you can track pollinators and other insects and that that would be beneficial. So I put a couple of packets of seed in behind the wall memorial under the trees. Oh right. And if you have a look in there, there's some that's come up. I know it's been late because they haven't had no rain, but it's yeah, yeah put some mm. in there. I only put a couple of packets in, and also Golding's do a box about that big for about twenty quid. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's, the way Chris has left it, there's very minimal and you know, very little preparation that's needed for either grass or for wildflower, but um, wildflower really wants to go into the early springtime so it would benefit mm -hmm. next year, but the grass, if, we, if I was able to mark out a section, we can just put some grass seed down and then just let that get started. And I said that if the community services do come back, then they need access to get that's stuff right. out of the gate, but um, they're not going to hurt by, if, if they walk to one specific Place, place yeah. they're not yeah. going to hurt if they're sitting around and walking all over. So, um, mm. so that's a um, nice little development with the with the allotment sites. So and I think we've only got one. Have you managed to contact them? I've, I've now, yeah, yeah. After a whole week of trying to get through to them, they definitely want it. So that's the last one gone. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for them to pay and sign the contract. Right. So we've we've now got a full site again after losing one or two um, mm. tenants and one tenant who has given up a double plot, so I've now split it down the middle to make two single plots and um, has now just let that, so now we've now got a full site there. And it's looking quite clean and tidy down there, the existing tenants are sort of looking after. And we've got six devils waiting us. Right, okay. Can't generate, can't make any more plots, <laughs> not Okay, anything from Lake's end? Uh, the only issue we've got is uh, an issue with the ditch um, alongside Hartley's field runs a lot from there. It's become overgrown. Um, I think we've reached out to Hartley's estate scene um, as far as we can tell it's their responsibility to clear it. So um, if it doesn't get cleared, I don't quite know what we're going to do with winter coming. Um, they'll, they'll only be responsible for doing half of it unless they own the land on both sides. Okay. Well, it'd be nice to clear their whole thing yeah. and you just yeah. sort out part of it. That's, that's the problem with a lot of dikes. People, when you ask them to clear it, will say, it's not my dike, or it doesn't belong to me. But if, if it runs alongside your property, you do own it to the halfway, you know, your side down to the bottom, and the other landowner owns his side down to the bottom. But a lot of people seem to think that it's not theirs, it belongs all to the other landowner. So yeah. um, if you... The other side is public highway, which is the main road. Yeah. Well, probably that was probably at highways if that was really bad to look at that. But um, yeah. was there any th when we had the meeting at Lake's End, there was um, concern, I think Brian raised concerns about a gentleman who appeared to have dumped soil at the bottom of his fence alongside the public footpath. Yes. Okay. Was that resolved? Yeah. I don't know whether it's been sorted, has it? Mark Sharma was going to go out and have a look. I only got back last night, so I didn't, I didn't think no, it was I've a I've got 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 I will got have a look. Yeah. 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 I've yeah, yeah, got yeah, looked yeah, when yeah. I went past either instantly. You beat me to it, Andrew. I'll just go and <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. It's, it's up here, Brian. It's up here. So. <laughs> Provided the information that I didn't think to look at it. I just right. passed. But okay, yeah. then. Um, so, and that's, that's it? That's it. Okay. Um, three holes matters. Nobody here representing three holes, but proof. We talked about a new notice board for the hall. We did? Where have we got with that? Nowhere. Nowhere. No. I suggested a new notice board for the hall when Melanie forwarded the, um, the clearance sale from where we got the one from Lake's End, but um, couldn't act on it. And I did put it to the, you know, wait for the communications group. Communications don't seem to have discussed it. So unless we buy a full price one or wait until finances are a little bit more healthy. To buy a full price one and then look at it again then. Right, all another sale comes and I'm 
Yeah. Well, I would say I've done so long. Yeah, it's just I think that I think that may have been a missed opportunity myself, but. Well, you didn't really act on it, and we were only at the communications meeting. There was only Christy, Bob, and me, I think. Yeah. yeah. And you were there, maybe? No, no, it was just it was just the three of us. Yeah. yeah. And we really, um, Rob, Rob was so. Um, his concern, his interest was entirely with the new website. And, um, Right, okay, we'll put it in the sure that might be something in a couple of weeks' time. So, unless there's anything else, we'll propose any items for the, um, the next agenda. And the next meeting will be the 10th of October at 7 o'clock at Three Holmes Village Hall. So that'll be in two weeks today. Can I give that Yeah, we've Thank you, Vivian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the agenda, could we please have one more November Sunday? Thank you. Ross? I was going to suggest Christmas lights. Christmas lights, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas lights. Yeah. I have raised yeah. this with the no, Rob, actually. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm really up to Christmas lights. Yeah. Oh, Christmas lights. Yeah, I go on. Yeah, the lanterns are reasonable. Yeah, yeah. 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 I bet people do. That's it. I close the meeting at whatever time Merlin's that, Doctor. 2007. 2007. Thank you. I'm not sure if it's easy now. 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 I